Hi guys and welcome to the next video in the Django and HTMX series. What we're going to do in this video is expand upon this page that we built in the last video. And this is a page that lists out all of the user transactions. And we have a small form on the right hand side. And this allows us to filter transactions by a particular income type or expenditure type. So if I filter that, we can see that the table of transactions is filtered down to only income type transactions. Now at the moment what we have is a form that is submitted and it sends a normal request to the back end. Django will then handle that request and it will return a response and that response is a new page. So this is essentially reloading the page and regenerating the entire page from scratch. Now what we want to do here is we want to move this to an HTMX based setup. So when we click this filter form, we want to send an Ajax request to the back end. We don't want to reload the page and we want to get back a response which is an HTML partial, a hypermedia response. And we want that to be swapped in and to replace the existing table in this case with the new data. So let's get started building that. If you remember from the introductory video in base.html, within the head tag here, we have a script here that links to HTMX on the CDN. So we have access to HTMX in this project. What we're going to do is we're going to go to the form element in this transaction list.html. So let's scroll down to the form element. And I think I've went past that. Here it's here. And instead of sending a normal get request, we're now going to use HTMX and we're going to use the HX get attribute. Now what we pass in here is a URL that we want to send the get request to. And I'm going to use that transactions-list URL along with Django's URL template tag here. And that's going to reference this URL in the URL patterns. And that's going to call this view here called transactions list. So that's going to send the get request and that's going to use an Ajax request behind the scenes. So we're not going to get that page reloading effect. Instead, we want to get a response and swap that into the document. And that's going to replicate the kind of functionality you would get in a single page application. But of course, the benefit is we don't have all that complexity of React or Vue.js. Now, what we're going to get back is a partial. And we're going to build that up in a second. But what I want to do now is set a target for the response. Now we can do that by setting an element here, an attribute called hx-target. And we can set that to a selector in the document. Now the selector I'm going to use is one called transaction container. Now you notice here that we have a div and at the end of the previous video, we added the ID of transaction container to that div. Now what this is doing is it's wrapping the entire table. So this table of transactions here is being wrapped by that div. And if we look at where this div is defined and scroll down, this is going to replace that table with the content that we're going to get back from Django. So that's what we're going to set as the target. Let's set that ID of transaction container. And because it's an ID, don't forget this symbol here. And finally, what I want to do is set hx-swap. And we're going to set that to outer HTML and that's going to replace the entire element and all of its children. Now we need to change the view that's called here for transactions dash list. So we're going to go to views.py and now we need to handle things slightly different. So rather than returning the entire transaction list, what we're going to do is return a template fragment or a partial. And to do this, I'm going to start by installing a package called Django HTMX. So let's go to the documentation for Django HTMX. And as you can see, this is some extensions for using Django with HTMX. And we did a video on this topic. It should be appearing on the screen now. That was a deep dive into what Django HTMX offers. What we're going to do to start with is go to the installation section and you can install Django HTMX using pip install. And we're going to do that now in VS Code. So if we go back to the terminal and we expand this here, we're going to run pip install Django HTMX and that's going to install that into the environment. Now what we need to do next is go to our settings.py file and we're going to add Django HTMX to the installed apps. Let's go back to the documentation. It's very simple. We can copy this and paste it in here. And I'm going to add a comma after that. And we're going to follow the installation instructions here. Django HTMX comes with a middleware and that's the HTMX middleware class. Now we're going to copy this and we're going to add that to the middleware setting. So back here in settings.py, we're going to scroll down and right at the bottom of the middleware list, I'm going to add the HTMX middleware. And I think that might be all we need to do. And by the way, the HTMX middleware, what that's going to do is add a Boolean property 
.htmx to Django's request object. And as a side note, if you want to install htmx into your project without using a CDN, you can follow the references on this page here, and there's a link to this in the description of the video. It's recommended to avoid using a CDN to include htmx. What you can do instead is you can use something like npm, or if you want, you can just download the htmx javascript file and then put that into your static files directories. And then if you use the static template tag, you can reference that within the head tag of your base template. Now we might do this at the end of this video, but for now I'm gonna stick with the CDN. Now that we've got Django HTMX in the project and we have this HTMX middleware, we can go back to views.py. And what we're gonna do in this view here is we're going to check if the request.htmx property evaluates to true. And if that's the case, we're going to return a different template partial here. So I'm gonna copy this render statement and I'm gonna paste it into the if statement. And then if we don't have request.htmx evaluating to true, we can just return the normal template because that means that it's a normal request for this given page. So we don't need to return a template fragment. It's only in the case of an HTMX request. Now, one other thing to note, we're going to use Django HTMX later in this series. So I'm not installing this just to use the .htmx property. We will use some of the additional functionality in that package later in the series. So let's return a template partial here in the event of an HTMX request. I'm just gonna paste this in here. So it's in the partials directory and it's gonna be a file called transactionscontainer.html. So let's go to the partials directory and we're going to create that file now. And we basically want to move the entire transaction container into this file. So what I'm gonna do is go back to the original transactions list template and I'm gonna scroll up here and this div here with the ID of transaction container. And remember that's the HX target element we want to move this div and all of its children into the partial template. So what I'm gonna do is copy this div and we're gonna copy everything inside of it. I'm going to cut that out of this template and we're going to move that into the transactions container. And I've sorted out the indentation, so the entire transaction container is now moved into this partial template and that contains the table with all of our transactions and it also contains the form that we defined and that's at the right hand side of the page. Now, if we go back to transactions list, that means that what we originally had is basically gone from this div here and we're left with an empty div. Now, what we want to do is include the template fragment here when the page is first rendered. So we can use Django's include template tag for that and we pass in the path to that template there. So when the page first loads, it's gonna include that by default. But when we send the HTMX request to the backend, we only want to return the hypermedia content that's in this template fragment. So we don't want to return the entire page as it were. We just want to return this data and this should be populated with the filtered transaction query set. So all of the filtering in the view, if we go back to views.py, this should all still be done no matter whether it's an HTMX request or a normal request. So let's verify that this is now working. If we save all of these files and go back to the browser, what I'm gonna do is reload the page and you can see we're getting an error, invalid filter, add label class. Now the reason for this, if we go back to transactions container, if we go down to the form, we're using the add label class template filter, and that comes from Django widget tweaks. Now we are using Django widget tweaks now within the template partial, so we're gonna remove the load widget tweaks directive here, and we're gonna paste that into the partial instead, and we need to do that right at the top of this partial. So load widget tweaks, and that's gonna give us access to that add label class template tag. And as well as that, we can also use the render field template tag. So let's try this again. If we go back to the page and refresh the page, we're still getting the table. We still have the form on the right hand side, but we're now separating this out into a partial. And what this means is that when we send a request here, when we submit this form, it's gonna do that using HTMX, as you can see here. So the page is not refreshed. Instead, that's sending an Ajax request to Django and Django can then handle that and it's then going to return the template partial because this is an HTMX request. And if we go back to the server, that means that this block here, this if statement is going to evaluate to true and that's why we get back the template partial here as you can see in that render statement. Now what we can also do is go back to the developer tools on the browser and what I'm gonna do is change the type here to an expense and when we hit filter, you can see that what's actually sent is an XHR request. 
Now an XHR request, that's an Ajax request. So what HTMX has done when we add these attributes to the form, as you can see here, when we add HX get, it's gonna then send that get request as an Ajax request to Django. So you're changing the mechanism from which the form is submitted from a normal request to the back end with a normal response to an Ajax request. And that request is gonna return a response that contains HTML content and you set an HX target attribute on the form here. And that's gonna tell HTMX where you want this returned HTML content to be swapped into the DOM. We've set it here to an element with the ID of transaction container. And when you swap that content into that element, we have an HX swap attribute as well. And that is an attribute that can allow you to customize how that content is gonna be swapped into the document. What we've got is outer HTML. And that means the returned HTML is going to entirely replace the target element and all of its children. We're gonna see examples of other swap techniques later in this series. But for now, let's finish the video by showing how to bring HTMX into our local application. And instead of referencing it in a CDN as we're doing here on line 17, we're instead going to add it to the application. So we can go back to the Django HTMX documentation on the installation page. And this section here will be linked below the video. What we're gonna do is download the HTMX file from the CDN. So let's go to this link here and that's gonna take us to the latest release of HTMX. And we're gonna download the minified HTMX file here. If we view that raw in the browser and copy this, what we can do is go back to our application. And in fact, I'm gonna go back to the Django HTMX installation page. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add it to a file called htmx.min.js. And that file is gonna be in a static directory. Now we have a static directory in the starter code. It's in this directory here. And we're gonna add a JavaScript folder in that directory. And within there, what we can do is create a new file and it's gonna be called htmx.min.js. And I'm gonna paste the contents of the code from that CDN into this file. So we have the file locally. We don't need to go over the network now to fetch that data. We now have it locally and we can close the htmx.min.js file. Now the next step is to use Django's static template tag in order to reference this htmx.min.js that we now have locally in the static directory. So at the top, we've already loaded the static template tag and we can use that here within the source of this htmx script. So rather than linking to a CDN, we're gonna remove that. And what we're going to do in here is use the static template tag in Django. And what we're gonna pass here is the path to htmx.min.js from our static directory. So that's gonna be in a JavaScript subdirectory, JS. And then within there, it's gonna be htmx.min.js. Let's now save this and we can go back to the browser. And I'm gonna go back to this page here. And this is our application. I'm gonna refresh the page and we're gonna make sure that that htmx file is being loaded by looking at the network tab. If I refresh this again, you can see we're getting the 200 response. It's able to fetch HTMX from our local directory. And it's gonna use that now instead of using the CDN link. So let's just doubly make sure that this is working. We're gonna select expenses only, and we're gonna filter the table. And as you can see, that's working without a page reload. If we look at the network tab and select income, that is still sending an XHR request. So that's all working fine. I want to finish this video with a very small optimization. And to do that, we're gonna look at Django debug toolbar. And you can see this here, that was part of the starter code. And what I'm gonna do is refresh this page and we're gonna look at the SQL queries that are being generated. You can see we have 23 queries when we load that page. And we have 20 similar queries. And the reason for this is due to the lookup of the category foreign key. So why is this happening? If we go back to our models.py file to start with, we have a transaction model. It contains a foreign key to the category model. And that's this one here that contains the category name. And what's going on is the classic n plus one problem. We did a video on that that should be appearing on the screen now. You can check it out for more information. But in this video, we're gonna very simply fix that problem. If you look at the transactions container that we have here, and we go up to the table, we have a reference to each transaction's category within a for loop that's looping over a set of these transaction objects. Now the problem is that the transactions have been fetched along with the foreign key to the category. And when we loop over these transactions here and reference that foreign key, 
Django is then going to perform an extra query for every single iteration of this for loop. And that's definitely not what we want when we render this table. But there's a very simple fix here. We can use the select related function in Django and that's going to do an SQL join on that foreign key when it's performing the fetching of the transactions. So essentially in one query we're also going to get back all of the categories that are attached to each transaction. And because this is a foreign key actually it should get back the single category that's attached to that transaction. So it's a very simple fix like I said we're going to go back to views.py and it's this here this transaction filter that we're using. That's the Django filter filter set and we're passing a query set into that. What we're going to do as well as filtering by the user who's logged in is we're going to chain select related to this and we're going to select the categories from the database. That's going to do that join and for each transaction it's going to fetch the category that's associated with that transaction. Now what we hope to see when we go back to the page is that instead of 23 queries we're going to cut that down significantly. So let's refresh the page and you can see on the right hand side we've cut that down to three queries. That's much more performant and this is important to understand by sending a lot of queries to the database from Django this can become a big performance issue and this can be a big bottleneck in the performance of your application as it scales. Wherever you're fetching that data and you're going to have to perform that join and display some information like this it makes sense to use select related in order to do that and that can help boost performance and boost your application's scalability. And that's all for this video. In this video we've added HTMX to the project and now when we submit the form that you see on the right hand side here that's being sent over an Ajax request and the returned content is a template partial that we're swapping into the DOM. We also brought HTMX down from a CDN into our local static directory and that's going to be beneficial for security and for performance when we actually go to deploy the application. And finally we optimised some of the SQL queries, the ORM queries that Django's sending and we cut that down significantly using the select related method. Now what we're going to do in the upcoming videos is we're going to add PyTest and we're going to start adding some tests to this application and we're also going to generate some summary statistics and indeed we're going to look at the form on the right hand side and we're going to add some new filters and again wire that up with HTMX. And we're also going to see some cool techniques such as subclassing the Django query set object and adding some convenience methods to that object. So that's coming up soon. If you've enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. And if you're enjoying this content consider buying the channel a coffee. We have a link in the description. And thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.